Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 29 today. Let's dive in and hear God's word. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You've come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised that once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. I'm not quite sure why that's gone on to verse one of the next chapter. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. We'll come on to that. Uh, tomorrow. So here's the picture. Uh, people have, uh, who received this letter first are drifting back to their Old Testament uh, religion, to their Judaism. It, it's easier uh, to slip back into that than following Jesus. Following Jesus has been costly. Um, they've lost family. Some of them have been imprisoned. Um, they've lost their identity, they feel. Um, they're not part of the, the nation they once were. The, the people of Israel aren't still practicing at the, the temple. They still have the high priests. They have the, the sacrifices. Everything is so tangible and real. And for those following Jesus, it just feels a little bit um, less touchable. Uh, and now the writer, in, in working through this great theology, says, look, you're not coming to Mount Zion. And thank God that that's the case. The place where um, if any animal was to come on the mountain, it was to be stoned. The, 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 the mountain that trembled, uh, the, the mountain that, that spoke of judgment and justice, uh, the, 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 mount, the mountain that, uh, that was a t- terrifying place to be. Mount Sinai, when the law was given, the people <laughs> said to Moses, you go up and you sort with God. We're, we're saying, well, out of the way, it's, it's far too scary. No, we're coming to Mount Zion, Mount Zion, where there's, there's, a, there's a new covenant in the blood of Jesus, uh, the blood that speaks a better word than Abel's. Abel's were blood uh, killed by his brother, that the blood screamed justice, justice. Um, and Cain was judged. Uh, Jesus' blood screams peace, peace, forgiveness. And uh, so we have this, this wonderful uh, new covenant. Um, and uh, because of that huge difference between the old covenant and the new covenant, uh, we're called to action. Um, as we're reminded that um, the, the voice that shook the earth at Mount Sinai has now promised that the earth is going to be shaken again. Uh, this world is not going to remain as it is. It will come to an end um, and only what cannot be shaken will remain. And so we in Christ, although we might feel as though the kingdom we belong to is intangible, it's not marked by national boundaries, it's not marked by uh, particular festivals or a, a particular centre of worship with the, the high priesthood and everything else. It's, it's this relationship with God through Jesus. Actually, what we have won't be shaken, whereas everything else will be. Uh, everything else will, will, will be finished, will come to an end, uh, but not um, the Lord Jesus Christ and the new life that we have in him. That's just particularly uh, pertinent because the, the Jewish religion uh, was shaken in the sense that uh, the temple was destroyed and, and never again has the sacrificial system been reinstated uh, and Judaism, uh, as it was in the time of Jesus, has been ended. It has been shaken, but this whole world too is going to be shaken. It's going to come to an end. Um, and only then those who are in Christ, those who have this unshakable kingdom, uh, will remain. And so we ought to be thankful as we reflect on these things. That ought to encourage us. Um, and we need to be reminded, don't we, because so, so much of Everything else seems so real, and uh, our Christianity can feel so alien, so unreal. Uh, as you go into the workplace today, 
um, being in church seems a long time ago and being a Christian seems um, so perhaps at times unrelevant and uh, so disconnected um, and issues of faith don't come to mind because of, of the task that you have in mind. But these things, everything we're seeing and touching around us is what's going to be shaken. It's, it's not going to last. But what we have in Jesus will. And so we need to remind ourselves of, of that. And, and there's a therefore there, verse 28, because we're receiving this kingdom, let us be thankful, first of all. We need to be thankful that we're not under the old covenant. We need to be thankful for the blood of Jesus that introduces the better new covenant. We need to be thankful um, that actually our identity isn't found in the things of this world, but we have a, an enduring identity in the Lord Jesus Christ, which will take us beyond death and beyond the end of this world. And that being the case, recognizing that the new covenant that we're part of, we then need to worship God acceptably uh, with reverence and awe. Notice that uh, the contrast is not, there was a scary mountain and there, now there's a mountain of grace. So chill out, relax. Uh, God's your mate, it's fine. No, actually, we're still to worship God with reverence and awe. He's still the holy God. We have been forgiven. We have a right relationship with him. He is our father, but he's our heavenly father. He's the living almighty God. And so we are to worship him acceptably with reverence and awe, because he is a consuming fire. His nature hasn't changed, and nor is ours. He is perfectly holy. We are sinful. What's changed is the covenant. Our, our relationship with him is not based on our performance. It's based on what Lord Jesus has done for us, which speaks mercy and peace and grace, rather than judgment and justice. So as you go into work today, or into school, or you're at home, and you're looking at your diary, and the things that seem most pressing, uh, don't forget that we're part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We're not coming to that scary old mountain. We are coming to Mount Zion, uh, to the, the better covenant. Um, but let's therefore, in the light of that, uh, be thankful and let's worship God uh, res with respect and all um, uh, living our lives for him, living for that kingdom that we cannot be shaken. Uh, let's invest in that. Let's invest in our relationship with Jesus day by day. Let's pray. Father, we live in a material world. We are material beings and the material it seems so much more tangible, so much more real than matters of faith and uh, truth. Um, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who we uh, trust by faith, uh, who we cannot see physically, who, who we believe in in response to your word. Um, and yet sometimes that can feel, feel so untangible, uh, so um, out there and so unreal given the pressing things that are demanding on us, whether it's the, the pain of our body, whether it's the, the press of relationships around us and the pressures of the work uh, that you've called us to. Father, we want to pray that you would help us to um, uh, realign our thinking, to understand what cannot be shaken, uh, to understand the better mountain that we've come to, uh, to recognise that you are a consuming fire. We need to worship with awe and respect and reverence, and yet we come not in fear and trembling, but in confidence because of the better covenant in the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for these things. Help us to work them out and live them out. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.